Morning Innovative, this is Trent. Hey Daryl, how you doing? So, what's uh, what's the problem? Your printer don't work. Okay, got that. Um, you think it's the place? And you opened all 10 packages to check. I'm not sure that Germany's open right now that I can call about this. What, what are your exposure times? You're not sure. Okay. Um, okay. Let me call you back. Okay. So I get this phone call pretty much every week. And we're going to show you how to not be Daryl here and not be that guy. Okay, so we're going to talk about photopolymer plates here a little bit and how to etch them um, and what that means exactly. There's a lot of details here. It's probably going to be broken into multiple episodes. Um, there's questions about the types of plates, water wash versus alcohol, single exposure versus multi-exposure plates, the line screen, the film, all sorts of things. But we're going to start with this and we're going to start with the theory of it so that you understand what's going on, what the difference is between exposure and etching. Just some very basic stuff, why it works and why it doesn't work. Um, and once you get this in your head, maybe it'll, uh, it'll help you troubleshoot as you move your way along. Okay, so photopolymer plates are made up essentially of two parts. Three really, including a little bit of binder or paint, but uh, two. You've got a steel backing plate. And you have the photopolymer on top. Based on the type of plate, this thickness of photopolymer can be different, and that thickness is how you get your etch depth. Now, what you're doing with this, over uh, with, with the plate, is there's two exposures at this point. The first exposure is with your film. So this is your film. On your film is an emulsion, the printing, right? And that's black. We'll talk about that in more detail in another episode, but that has to be a solid black image so that the light doesn't leak through. Above it, you have your UV bulbs that are a specific distance that are putting light down on the plate. Now the first trick here, the first thing to think about, is that this emulsion needs to be pressed directly against this plate, so there's intimate contact. That way, when the light source turns on, the light doesn't leak underneath the film and cause the image to shrink or to be uneven. The next part of this is that once it's in contact with that plate and you expose, obviously any holes in that image, any little dots in that image, or any thinness in that image will, have, will allow the UV light through. Now, what happens here? This is where the first mistake gets made with people uh, when they're thinking about the process. This is not the etching process with the UV. This is the exposure process. So what we're really doing here is not etching this area underneath the image. We're exposing everything else. So when that films down on the plate, the first thing that happens is we start hardening that photopolymer from the bottom to the top. Now there's a set time for this. Let's say uh, it's a flint material. They're going to tell you it's three or four minutes depending on your bulbs. You have to go that long. Because if you don't go that long, you're not exposing all the way to the top surface of this plate. And the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to start this top surface is going to remain soft. You're going to start this top surface is going to remain soft. Now, in this instance, what you have is we've exposed it for two minutes and we've covered the whole plate here. The next step is to remove this and, excuse me, we do a second exposure with a line screen. And if you've looked at your line screen, you know it consists of a piece of film with a million little dots on it. We'll talk about what line screen means in another episode in more detail. What's happening here is now you're allowing the light to come through the film in a pattern. 
and it creates a number of little mountains in the plate. X amount per square centimeter, X amount per square inch. 120 lines per centimeter, something like that. And it exposes, again, you're going to expose, if your first exposure was three minutes, your second exposure should be three minutes. You don't fiddle with the times. They should be matching because you want the top of this die to be equal to the top of your previous exposure. So those all solid up. Your next step is, of course, the washout where you put it in to alcohol or water for a set period of time and gently agitate the surface and take the loose material out. All this other material goes out of here. Now, people are constantly concerned. They, the first step that they do when they think that their plate isn't deep enough is they increase their exposure time. Now, clearly God, that doesn't work. I increase my exposure time. All I'm doing is allowing more light in here and making the plate shallower and shallower. So it's a, it's a mistaken sense of how the process work, works. Etching happens in the washout stage, not in the UV stage. So let's say I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, and I do something like two minutes and two minutes. Now what's going to happen is, let's just redraw the top surface of the plate. This top layer remains soft. So you don't harden all the way to the top surface. And then what you're going to do is the line screen isn't just in the image area, it's all over the plane. So you are now going to create a surface of dots all over the top of your plane. And your plate is going to dock here. You're going to see a lot of ink on the plate itself. And if you run your thumbnail across it, you'll hear a zipping sound almost. If you look at it under just the right light, you can even see the dots. So obviously, shortening your exposure times for depth doesn't work. Um, what's happening there is all you're doing is losing um, the, the ability to doctor properly on the plate. So we'll try, well, why don't I just do a full exposure on the first one? get that surface hard outside the image area all the way to the top surface so I don't get the dots on the surface and ruin my plate. And instead I'm going to shorten my second exposure. So instead of, I'm going to do the correct thing, I'm going to do three minutes, and I'm going to do two minutes on my second exposure. Well, what happens then is, of course, your dots don't go to the top surface of the plate, increasing your ink volume, right? in there, which seems like a good idea, maybe, um, if you can get a deeper ink volume to transfer based on fiddling with your ink, your ink uh, setup and things. But what's really happening is you just essentially sheared off the top surface of those dots below the, the top surface of the plate that's hard, and then your ceramic cup, your ceramic blade, is simply going to dip in and scoop the image out. Uh, in the area, and you get now even less ink volume than you would up here. Okay, so you get chattering, you wear the edges out, and what ends up happening is you—I'm sure you've seen it—is you look. It looks like it's um, thinner in the middle than on the outside edges when you when you print. The way to increase ink volume in your etch, in theory is to change your line screen from, say, uh, a fine line screen to a, a coarser line screen. And what that would do is, if you have a fine line screen, you have a lot of little dots like this, whereas a coarser one is like this, and you actually increase the volume of ink available in the edge to lift up and out. The issue there, of course, is can you get it to all lift in a cohesive layer up and out of the image? And uh, you know, question, it's, it's pretty questionable. Most of the time, this is an attempt to avoid a second print or a double print uh, on the machine, and most of the time, it does not work. What you want to do, in general, with plates, is find out what your exposure times are supposed to be on the plates. Make sure your film is good and your line screen is good, and we'll talk about that in another episode. And then expose it to those times every time. Um, when you start to fiddle with it, you end up being that guy. You end up being the guy 
that calls me up and tells me the plates doesn't don't work, when in fact what's happening is you're not exposing the plates correctly and ending up with a problem. Thank you very much. And that's it for episode three. Next time we will talk about um, film density and line screen. I'll talk to you soon.